Hi guys, Drew back again with Princess Craft RV. Today we're going to walk through the appliances and accessories of the 2021 Tab 400 Solo Boondock Edition by New Camp. Uh, as always, we're going to start right up front here with the loading and unloading procedure. Uh, this camper is going to ride on a two inch ball. Uh, as we see this coupler, it is in the unlock position. It will actually hold back in that unlock position uh, to help you back underneath of it. Uh, once you are centered underneath that coupler, we're gonna go ahead and lower the jack uh, and the coupler on top of that ball. Once we are fully seated, we're gonna go ahead and take this uh, slide latch, slide that fully forward, making sure that both teeth are fully engaged here on the frame. Uh, we are then gonna go one step further and it's gonna be our recommendation that we go ahead and pin this back. Uh, that's gonna keep that from potentially rattling loose going down the road. It is also going to add you a little bit of security there. Uh, once we have that latch down there on the ball, we're going to go ahead and take our tow chains. Very important that we do cross these underneath the coupler. That is state law in Texas. Uh, it is also state law in Texas that these cannot make contact with the pavement at any time. So we're going to skate that fine line of having enough room to make our turns left to right, but not so much room that they may again contact the pavement. Uh, very important, riding right along those tow chains or right next to those tow chains is going to be your emergency breakaway cable. This is a very important safety feature. What this does is if these other connection points become compromised as the two vehicles separate, this is going to act like a rip cord to the electric brake system. Uh, once it's pulled out, it's going to help you avoid like a runaway camper scenario. Uh, also riding right next to there is going to be your seven-way receptacle. This is going to plug into the bumper of your vehicle. This is going to give you full function to your tow vehicles, uh, marker lights, tail lights, braking system, charging system, all of that's going to be ran through this plug here. Uh, hopping right up here to your, excuse me, to your propane uh, compartment. Uh, we have a 20 pound propane cylinder. Now this is going to be the same variant that you find on any uh, propane gas grill, uh, open and close valve on the top. Very easy to remove. Of course, first you're gonna make sure that cylinder is in the closed position. Uh, then we are going to disconnect your pigtail here. And then lastly, we would loosen this tension band and that would allow us to go ahead and lift that tank up to have it serviced or refilled. Uh, other than that, feel free to use this for some storage. Uh, you have a nice gas strut here to hold that open uh, when loading and unloading the uh, compartment here. Uh, if we move along here to the side, first thing that we're going to find is our stabilizer jacks. Now we have stabilizer jacks on all four corners of the unit. Uh, they are operated by this drive nut we see here on the outside and you're going to use this included crank handle to come down uh, and make contact with the pavement. Now once you have made contact with the pavement, maybe go a quarter turn more uh, just to kind of sure everything up. Uh, you don't need to really bear down on these. Uh, they're not meant to be load bearing kind of jacks. What they're, the goal is, is just to go ahead and stabilize that floor, uh, keep it from feeling like you're walking around on a couple tires. Uh, we also have your uh, air conditioner vent here. Um, as you can see, it's graded. Uh, we do have a cover for that. and We're gonna use that when we're storing the unit. What that's gonna do is keep flying insects from nesting within the, uh, the orifice there uh, and keep any dirt and debris out again while in storage. Uh, moving along here, we have your dump valves. Uh, not a lot of space here in between these units, uh, but we have your black for black water, which is going to be toilet waste, solid waste, anything that comes from the toilet. And then we have your gray for uh, sink water, shower water, relatively cleaner of the two. In the center is gonna be your bayonet fitting. That's where you're gonna make your sewage hose connection. And you're gonna make that connection the very same way as you remove the cap. So if we go ahead and remove this cap here, we're going to see two keyholes and then we have studs along the outside. What we're gonna go ahead and do is put those keyholes right in between the stud, give it a uh, clockwise turn, and that's gonna go ahead and lock it on. As we can see, your sewage hose is going to have those very same keyholes. Now it's very important that we operate these correctly. Um, First off, treat it kind of like a vacuum lock. You don't want to have either of these valves or both of these valves open at the same time. Uh, what we're looking to avoid is any cross contamination or potential back feeding issues. Uh, biggest thing with this also is you're going to want to keep these valves in the closed position during use. Uh, we want to keep those tanks in as wet or flowing condition as we can. 
And the easiest way to do that is of course, keep those in the closed position. We're gonna use the monitor panel on the inside of the camper. We're going to uh, monitor those levels as they fill up. We would then pull that handle and dump uh, in that order. Generally, the most popular option is going to be, of course, dumping your black water first. Uh, once we are you know, fairly sure that we've got it all out, we're gonna close that valve. We're then gonna open up the gray water. We're gonna allow that gray water to not only rinse our sewage hose, but any shared plumbing between the two. A very important thing to take note of is going to be your tire pressure and lug nut torque. Uh, with any camper tire, we run those at the max. The max tire pressure rating for this specific tire is going to be 50 PSI. That's gonna give us the highest flexibility uh, in terms of weight rating, whether we're completely full or completely empty, that 50 PSI is going to be a great number for us to use. Uh, also, these lug nuts have been torqued to 100 foot-pounds. Manufacturer recommends a retorque procedure, generally that's going to fall within the first 15, 25, 50, and 100 miles of travel. It's very important that we use a torque wrench and make sure that these are maintaining that level of torque. Manufacturer further recommends that at the start of each trip there on after that we do go ahead and make sure again that they are maintaining that level of torque. Now we're gonna be able to find that tire pressure and really any uh, axle information, things like that. Uh, well, tire pressure is gonna be stamped on the sidewall of the tire, as well as you're going to be able to find that on the data tag that is at the driver's side front corner of the unit. So moving right along, we have your 30 amp, 110 volt power supply. Uh, now this is going to be included. Generally, this is with 30 feet in length and it only plugs into the camper one way. So if we take a look here at the actual plug, we have uh, two slotted receptacles and kind of one L-shaped. We line everything up properly on the camper, plug straight in. We then give it an eighth inch turn to the right. That's going to lock it in. And then we do have a secondary collar here to screw down and make sure that connection is nice and tight, keep somebody from uh, you know, potentially tripping over it or uh, it working itself loose. So make sure we're using both of those kind of mechanisms to secure that. And then down below that, we have your solar plug. Uh, of course, this unit has roof mounted solar. What this is for is this is if you want to add a secondary solar panel, a portable panel, if you will, what you do is you'd make your connection here. This is a direct connection to the battery. Uh, from there, you're gonna take your panel and uh, move it out into the sun, directionalize it as necessary. Most of those portable panels do have the charge controller built directly into the panel. That's gonna be kind of the brains behind the operation that's going to take in energy as needed. And then once those batteries are full, it's going to uh, make sure it doesn't overcharge them. Now, quite a bit going on here in this compartment. This is where your, all your water connections are gonna be uh, and so forth. So if we take a look here in the compartment, uh, we have first off a light. Now you of course have a, a motion sensor on that light or you just have a simple on off. So it is a three way switch. You can use it uh, however you are inclined to do so. And then if we take a look here at these pictures, now you'll see that these knobs have different orientations depending on how we're using them. Uh, in this setup that we have it right now, we are in dry camping mode. What that means is we are going to use the onboard 12 volt water pump to go ahead and draw that up from the water tank to the fixtures and make it usable. You can see we have a couple different options too. If we were running it on city water connection here, we would uh, switch the orientation around. It looks like we would just switch this into the down position there. Uh, we would then use our city water connection here, make our connection there. Generally, you'd run that up here through the floor and we're gonna make our connection here. Now, when we do talk about city water, it's very important that we take note of the water pressure going into the unit. As you can see here by this sticker, this unit is rated for a max 50 PSI water pressure. What we're going to do to regulate that water pressure is of course use a water pressure regulator. Uh, this is very important to use this every single time you take the unit out. This is the only reliable way to go ahead and regulate the pressure coming into the unit. What we're gonna do when we use this is we're gonna hook this directly onto the water source or as close to the water source as we can get. We then go ahead and take our water hose hook that directly onto the water pressure regulator. And then uh, we would take our hose, our camper side of the hose, feed it up through the floor. You see you have a door here, uh, so you don't have to keep the compartment open all the time. Once we've done so, we're gonna make our connection onto the camper by again, rotating that hose connection uh, on the trailer bound side. So also in this compartment, we have your water pump switch here. 
Uh, very easy to turn that on when you're you know, making your water connections here. Now you're also gonna have a water pump switch on the inside. They, there's only one water pump to the unit, so it is just two switches, uh, depending on what is most convenient for you. Below that switch, we have a freshwater tank heater. Uh, what that's going to do is if you're colding, or if you are camping in cold weather, uh, that's gonna heat that water within the freshwater tank to keep it from freezing. Below that, we have a black tank flush. Uh, what that's going to do is correspond with a jet inside the black water tank, specifically designed to help blast off uh, compounded toilet waste, body waste, things like that. Uh, what that means for you is that we're going to open up, make sure that black water valve's in the open position. We don't want to overflow that tank. Uh, with that black water valve in the open position, we're going to make our connection here with any old garden hose, and we are going to allow that sprayer jet to go ahead and rinse that black water tank until we are satisfied with the level of cleanliness. Uh, also here in the compartment, we have a quick connect uh, kind of sprayer hose that works very simply. Of course, you have access to hot and cold water. Uh, when we do make our connection, again, a quick connect, we would slide this locking collar back, insert fully, and that's gonna go ahead and lock on. We can then choose hot or cold water. And then on this side, we have a standard kind of garden hose sprayer with some different spray modes, things like that. Also in this compartment, we have our low point drains. Now manufacturer recommends that anytime the unit is gonna be in storage for more than seven days, that we do go ahead and uh, purge all the water from the system. It's very important that we do so to keep things nice and sanitary. Uh, generally, that's all going to be done here in this location. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to open up those low point drains. Those are going to be anything in between water source and fixture. So all the uh, to and from plumbing is going to be drained from this location. And then if we go ahead and look down here on the underside, right behind the tire, we have our freshwater holding tank drain. So as long as we drain, open up all three of those valves, we're going to drain the freshwater holding tank. We're going to drain the point A to point B plumbing. And last but not least, we're going to drain the ALDA and we are going to find those drains underneath, you know, on the inside of the unit, underneath the, uh, the bed area. So we'll make sure we get eyes on that when we do go ahead into the inside. Uh, I think that just about covers it here on, well, actually we have cable and satellite inlets here as well. Uh, now, if we want to feed either a park cable service or an aftermarket, aftermarket satellite package to the unit, we're gonna go ahead and use those to do so. Some higher end campgrounds will provide that service. And just about every satellite provider is offering a package geared towards RVers. Either way, those are going to be the inlet of those services. They are going to uh, terminate at the designated TV area of the camper. And it is, again, just a pass-through connection to feed those services into the unit. Uh, right beside that compartment, we have your Alda vent. Uh, not really much you have to do as a consumer with that vent. Uh, it is going to be our recommendation that you keep that free breathing. Uh, make sure you're not like putting a lawn chair up in front of it. It does need to breathe. It does blow very hot air when it all is on. So uh, just making sure we are letting that exhaust. So here at the rear of the unit, not too terribly much that we need to talk about in terms of function. Of course, you have your tail lights, marker lights. Uh, you can just see the backside of that solar panel. But again, from a functionality standpoint, not too terribly much we need to talk about. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, uh, if we come down low here, we do have an auxiliary propane port. Uh, what that's used for is if you want to, um, you know, hook up like a secondary propane appliance and tie into your propane supply at the front of the camper, you can easily do so with that. Uh, what you're going to use to do that is that same kind of quick connect fitting that we saw with the uh, outside shower. What you do is, again, you slide that locking collar back. You're going to insert the male end fully. Once you've done so, that's going to snap and lock into place. And then on this particular connection, we have a valve. So with any valve, if we turn that with the flow, uh, we are going to be on. If we turn it across the flow, that will be off. And we wanna make sure that we are, when we are going down the road, that we do put this dust cap in place. That's gonna keep any dirt and debris from, excuse me, depositing into the connection, uh, keep things nice and clean and in great working order. Uh, moving on here, we have a, of course, your compartment. Um, other than being a compartment, we're going to find a couple things in here. We have a resettable breaker here. Excuse me. We also have your battery disconnect switch. Now, for periods of long-term storage, it's very important that we do disconnect that battery. Uh, with any 12-volt system, you're going to have nominal or phantom draws on that system. 
From the day to day, that's no big deal, but compounded over weeks of storage, it could wear and tear on the battery. So uh, when we are storing it very easy, we just take this switch, give it a counterclockwise turn there. And uh, if the battery is sitting on its side, like the picture, that means we're disconnected. If the orientation of the battery is correct, that's gonna mean we're connected. We also have that same style of light in here, which is going to be a motion light. Uh, if we uh, switch it one way, which anytime we open the compartment, that light's gonna turn on. Uh, or if we would prefer to just turn that on and off, we have that option as well. Uh, moving on, we have a little radio whip antenna. Um, you know, that's going to allow you to take in some, some radio reception. I wouldn't expect to get crazy reach with that little antenna, but it is there uh, if you want to take advantage of it. Also have a couple all-weather outlets here. Uh, just your standard 15 amp receptacle. Uh, nothing too crazy, going to help power any devices if you are enjoying this outside space. Uh, step very easily is spring loaded, so you just push and pull. Of course, when we close it, that light turns off. When we go ahead and pull it out, that light turns on. Uh, also here, of course, we have your assist handle. Uh, we have a door hold back. Uh, what that's going to allow you to do is not only keep the door from swinging, uh, swinging into the camper, but it's also gonna hold that back if you wanna utilize that screen door uh, here on the inside. So tucked here into the door, we do have that kind of accordion style screen door with this latched into place. It's gonna keep that again from swinging into the wind. So last but not least, we have your gravity feed for your spare tire here. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to use the included stabilizer jack crank handle. We are going to turn it in the uh, direction here that we're wishing to accomplish. Uh, of course, once it reaches the pavement, we can go ahead and pull it on out, uh, change our tire. Now, it's important to note if we do have to actually uh, put a jack on the unit to change the tire, we're gonna put that jack directly on the axle as close to the tire as we can without it interfering in our work. And we're gonna, of course, change our tire. Uh, we can go ahead and put the blown out or damaged tire in this gravity feed location, and then, of course, crank it back up. Uh, just about covers it here on the exterior of the Tab 400. We're gonna go ahead and hop on the inside and take a look at those appliances. So here on the interior, uh, starting right up front here, we have those pull down, up, uh, pull up and down shades. Uh, that we've seen on all the other New Camp models. Uh, of course, one direction is going to be kind of your privacy and the other direction is going to be your window screen. If we wanted to go ahead and pull that down or of course open the window first and then pull that down, uh, we can get a nice breeze running through the unit. Uh, now also, if we are going to operate these windows, all of them are gonna operate very similar. You have a little push button down here on the bottom and you have those all along that side. And then we have two latches on the side as well. If we go ahead and lift that up, we're gonna then tighten these struts up. Once we've done so, that window will hold open. And again, we would then pull down the shade to go ahead and enjoy that uh, breeze. Uh, very simple, when we're pulling the window back in, we're just going to do the exact opposite. One thing I do wanna note here is that you do have two uh, kind of positions. If we were to put this latch or all of these latches in that middle position, it's gonna allow us to go ahead and vent the camper but still be relatively secure. And then when we go ahead and fully close it, we pull all the way back past that last latch and we're gonna go ahead all around the outside and make sure uh, we have those all secure before going down the road. Uh, now above my head, we have your uh, overhead light. We have a couple brightness levels on that light as well. And then of course we have this backlighting here on the shelf that's going to be controlled over here. Uh, we also have pull down shades on, or excuse me, pull up shades on both of those windows. Again, to give you a, uh, a little bit of privacy when utilizing the unit. And then we also have a secondary sleeping area, uh, which this table will fold into. Now when doing so, uh, first off, you're going to want to uh, at least move the cushions partially out of the way to, to kind of give you some room. So once we've done so, we have uh, two locking tabs here on the back uh, of the table. So we're going to want to push those in to actually unlock it. 
it helps if you kind of lift the table up on the front end a little bit. So once we push those in, we can go ahead and remove the table off the, the rail and we're gonna go ahead and move it down here to this bottom rail. It's up to you kind of on the order that you do things, but at some point you're gonna need to fold this in. So there's a little release button here uh, to fold that leg in. And then once we've done so, we can go ahead and lift the table off of that rail. We're gonna then move it down and those little locking tabs can be slightly touchy, like this one actually popped out. So I'm just going to go ahead and push that back in. Now, once that table's on the floor, we can reach back there and kind of stick our finger underneath those locking tabs and lift them up uh, again to secure that table from uh, moving off of that rail. Uh, once you've done so, you can go ahead and put these cushions down. And we're going to use uh, this extra cushion here to fill out that space something like so uh, and then you can also of course use these back cushions and kind of use like use that like a couch uh, as well I think this is a pretty popular option uh, when returning the table back uh, very similar uh, setup we're gonna make sure that we are unlocked off of that rail by pushing the tabs in we come up, make sure the tabs are down. At this point, we can go ahead and unlock that leg to support it. And then we can reach under and push those tabs up. Again, that table is nice and locked in. It's not going anywhere for us. So down here underneath the table, we have a very important piece of safety equipment, which is going to be your LP leak detector and carbon monoxide detector. Uh, now, it's not only very important that we do test this every single time we take the unit out, but it's very important that we test all of our safety equipment throughout the unit. That's including your smoke alarm, your fire extinguisher, and again, your LP leak carbon monoxide detector. This particular appliance is wired into the 12 volt section of the camper. So it uh, doesn't have any batteries that need change or anything, but it does have a test button. So if we go ahead and push that button, it's going to let you know it's working properly with the series of beeps. Uh, also, it will let you know kind of which gas is uh, sensing uh, with a uh, little bit of flashes of that light and again, an audible tone. Uh, so we have your 15 amp outlet here with dual USB chargers. We also have a 12 volt outlet here, uh, allow you to power any 12 volt uh, appliance as well as again a couple USBs uh, on that as well depending on if we are boondocking or we have a 30 amp connection. So right here inside the door we have uh, quite a bit going on. We have our older display, we have our courtesy panel, our convenience center, and then we also have our thermostat. So starting with the convenience center here, this is going to give us a real-time readout of where our tanks sit in level of full uh, of course, the more light you see here on this display, uh, the fuller the tank is. We can also test the level of our battery. As a, you can see, it's reading full now. That battery is going to read full anytime you're plugged into shore power. So to get a true readout of where that battery sits, we need to make sure that we are disconnected from shore power. Uh, down below, a couple of switches here is going to be our water pump switch for one. Uh, you can see that that corresponds with the uh, red light there. We have our porch light, which we saw outside, which is just going to be that amber colored light uh, again on the outside of the entry door. We have our sink light, which is just going to, of course, be the overhead uh, lights there above the uh, sink and stove. We have our accent lighting, which is going to be the uh, backlighting that we saw on the cabinets uh, at the uh, front of the camper as well as in the bedroom area. Now hopping up here to the Aldis system. Now this is gonna be your boiler system within the unit. Uh, this is gonna provide you not only with hot water but with your radiant heat as well. Uh, once we turn it on, it's going to kind of boot up and send us into this uh, kind of information screen. This is gonna tell us kind of what we're using, what this is saying to us right now. If we see those arrows kind of going around in a circle, that means that the radiant heat is on and it's showing us that we're plugged into shore power here and that it is 68 degrees on the inside of the unit. Now, if we hit that menu button, that's gonna take us into our functions. Uh, we have our temperature control here, plus or minus uh, for that radiant heat. And then we have our water heater option here. 
Uh, if I go ahead and I hit that plus sign one time, it's going to take us into kind of normal operation when that uh, scale is kind of half full, that's normal operation. If I hit it one more time, it's going to take us into boost mode. So what that means if we're in boost mode, if we are utilizing the radiant heat and trying to heat that water up at the same time, if we go ahead and enter into boost mode, it's going to put all available power into heating as much water as it can as quickly as it can. So it's going to momentarily power down the radiant heat option and again put all available power into heating water. Uh, if we go down a little further, that's going to take us into our sources. The lightning bolt here is going to be electricity. We have a couple options again in terms of electricity, uh, one kilowatt, two kilowatt, essentially like a low and high power consumption. Uh, you can go ahead and kind of fine tune that to your needs. And then we also have our propane option there. So you can run either way uh, or both at the same time, whichever again you choose to do so or as those sources kind of present themselves. Uh, we can go in here and, and kind of really fine tune this thing and make it very intuitive, uh, set specific time and temperatures and things like that. Uh, my recommendation is go ahead and make sure that you kind of read up on the appliance itself before we go in there and start kind of fine tuning it. Uh, below that we have your Dometic Captive Touch Thermostat. So if we go ahead and hit that mode button one time, uh, that's gonna go ahead and take us into the actual modes. Uh, first thing we need to choose is fan speed. So our options are going to be low, high, and auto. If we go to either low or high, that fan speed, that fan is going to remain on constantly whether or not it uh, reaches our designated temperature. So to kind of keep it right with us, we're going to go with the auto side. We're going to hit that mode button one more time. That's going to take us right into the air conditioner mode. Just like with any other thermostat, we have temperature control up or down there. It's uh, taking note of our fan speed, which again is auto, and the snowflake noted with cool means that we are in air conditioner mode. Now, if I hit that one more time, it's gonna say or furnace down here. Now, keep in mind that this does not have a, a propane burning furnace, which this selection would know. Uh, so in this particular case, that's kind of a null and void option. But if we hit it one more time, it's gonna take us into the heat pump mode, uh, which is our, going to be our electric heat option and the cool cat will run in kind of reverse and actually produce heat with that heat pump. So you do have uh, multiple ways to heat the unit, whether you're utilizing the radiant heat here uh, or the heat pump here, or again, both. So you can have that radiant heat running through here and you can use that heat pump to kind of circulate that heat to give you, a, again, kind of an overall, um, you know, more effective uh, heat there. Um, just about covers it here. We're going to go ahead and move into the kitchen area. Uh, nothing too crazy to note here. Of course, you have everything kind of tucked away and streamlined if you're using this space, but not uh, prepping a meal. And then when, of course, you want to, you can go ahead and lift both the stove uh, and the sink up. A very easy operation here on the stove. You can fold that handle up. Uh, if we were to open this up or pull it away from me, or excuse me, towards me, and out, that's going to be cold water. If we pull it all the way up and out, that's going to be hot water. Uh, that is noted there, uh, color coded on the actual fixture. Uh, same with the stove. Again, you have that kind of lift up option. Now this does lock in the up position. So make sure that when we go to close it, uh, we are you know, following the instructions here. We do have to lift up on that glass top and close it there. Other than that, uh, we have an electric sparker here on the uh, stove top, so very easily we turn that to light. We go ahead and hit that sparker, of course, until we see a flame at the actual appliance. Uh, now down below that, you're going to see uh, kind of how the cabinetry works. Uh, they all have these locking buttons. So even the overhead cabinets have that same kind of locking style button. Uh, make sure that we are going ahead and, and locking that before going down the road. If not, you'll go to your destination and all your cabinets will be open and your stuff will probably be strewn uh, across the unit. Uh, if I hop down low here, we have your fuse panel breaker box. Uh, this is going to give us control of uh, your 12 volt and 110 volt appliances here. Everything you see here on the right side of that panel is going to utilize an automotive blade style fuse. Those are replaceable and it is of course my recommendation to keep a few spares uh, within the unit in case you need one. Everything there on the left side of that panel is gonna be a 110 volt appliance and that's gonna utilize a resettable uh, breaker that you're used to seeing in the residential sector. 
Uh, in terms of function, everything's going to be labeled here on this side uh, as well as this side. So 110 volt appliance is labeled on this side, 12 volt appliance is labeled on this side. So here in the restroom, uh, they're going to utilize that kind of standard uh, RV style toilet with a pedal flush. It will be a light press on that pedal to uh, feed water to the bowl and then a full press to go ahead and flush. Uh, now keep in mind, this is going to be where we introduce any toilet chemicals into the unit, uh, whether that's going to be a deodorizer, a tissue dissolver, anything is, that we do choose to use is going to be introduced within this, uh, you know, from the toilet directly. So we're going to make sure that we are following the manufacturer's recommendations of the product that we're using. Uh, now also take note that we're going to want to utilize nice long flushes and we're going to make sure that we use a single ply toilet paper just like I mentioned on the outside. It's very important specifically with that black water tank that we keep that in as wet or flowing condition as we can. Now also we have that same standard uh, pull up shade to of course give you a little bit of privacy here in the restroom. Uh, moving up we have an exhaust fan as well labeled in terms of open and closed there on the handle so if it were in this position it's actually open it looks like it's closed uh, but that's just kind of like a fold down door um, once we've done so we have a little red button there we can push of course that's an exhaust fan that's going to help pull any moisture out of the air when you are uh, showering if i turn around here uh, we have the fold down sink uh, same fixture that we've seen in the kitchen so uh, push towards the back and out is going to be hot water, down and out is going to be cold water, and then of course once we're done using it, we go ahead and fold it out of the way. Uh, Multi-positional shower head here, so if we want to kind of raise or lower that, we have the option to do so. Uh, if we go ahead and take a look at the sprayer, they kind of use that kind of modern styling with that. Uh, hot and cold right here on the fixture. And then behind the actual shower head, we have an on off switch here for the backlighting. Uh, the overhead light is controlled right there on the fixture. So our TV here is in the stowed or travel position. Uh, what that means is it is just locked against the wall here. Uh, we're going to want to make sure that we do secure that before going down the road, keep that from uh, bouncing around and doing any damage to the camper uh, or the TV. Uh, when we're ready to go ahead and utilize that, we can unlock it. There's a little latch here on the top. Uh, if we go ahead and bring that towards us, that's going to unlock it. From there, we can go ahead and position the TV either facing uh, the bed area here, facing the uh, dinette, wherever we choose uh, to locate it at. We have uh, multi positions. And then when we fold that back up, we just want to make sure that we are giving this a secure push towards the wall. Towards the wall. Uh, until we hear that click, that's going to go ahead and lock that in position. Uh, moving on, uh, of course, we have some storage above the bed here. Um, you know, same kind of latches that we're used to seeing throughout the camper. We have uh, some lights, uh, again, above that bed. Uh, easy switch on and off right there on the fixture. New Camp has made it very easy to turn this seating area into a full-size bed. Uh, what you're going to do is, is grab on the bottom part of this uh, and you're going to as close to center as you can and you're going to lift slightly and pull towards the kitchen area. Uh, once that's fully out, you're going to take this secondary cushion, you're going to go ahead and lay it in that space. And again, that just about doubles the sleeping capacity of the unit. Right above the refrigerator, you're going to find your Jensen head unit or multimedia center. This is going to give you full function to AM, FM radio, Bluetooth, we have HDMI and auxiliary inlets. Uh, we have a couple zones of speakers, although I do believe they just utilize zone A with this particular floor plan. Uh, if we go ahead and turn that on, uh, we're going to see our volume controls here. Our, of course, we're on uh, radio here. We have a space here for our presets and kind of secondary controls as well. Our seek and find buttons. And of course, you're going to have a remote control uh, to uh, of course, control this throughout the camper. Uh, dropping down, we have your isotherm refrigerator. Now, this is a 12-volt uh, refrigerator, and we have our temperature control here. So, uh, not an exact science, but very much like you have at home, one through seven. And then if we turn that all the way into the zero position till it clicks, that's going to be off. A uh, little freezer box as well, uh, and it looks like they included an ice tray as well. 
Um, back here, probably a little hard to see on camera, we have our uh, inverter switch. What that's going to do if we turn that on, that's going to go ahead and let us uh, power these outlets off of the battery. Uh, so if we're truly boondocking, we want to run a laptop or charge a phone, whatever, we can go ahead and utilize that space to do so with the inverter. Before we finish up, I just wanted to take some time and talk about the uh, interior of the entry door. Uh, we do have your fire extinguisher here. As I mentioned earlier, it is very important that we do go ahead and test the function of that fire extinguisher every single time we take the unit out. What we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and push that green tab down if it springs back. That means there's still pressure within the unit and it's safe to use. We're also going to find a little stowaway trash can, which is cool. Uh, it is, you know, the, of course you'd put a bag in here, use it as normal, but the whole kind of trash can is removable if you want to go ahead and, and clean it or wipe it off, sanitize it, things like that. We again have that same kind of accordion style pull up shade, a couple storage compartments, and of course your lock here. Now that just about covers it with the Tab 400 Solo Boondock Edition. Uh, we do hope you enjoyed the walkthrough. If you do have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Have a great day.